All right, the Falcons at 2-7 and seven take on the Panthers in Carolina. Panthers 5.5-point favorites. It's a 49.5-point over-under. The aforementioned Kyle Allen, the new quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. Atlanta's given up six quarterback one performances this year. So a lot of fantasy owners wanting to know Allen or Rivers, Allen or Brady, Allen or Kyler this week. Also, <laughs> Allen or Rivers. That's another question people are asking. Also, Rivers versus Allen. When waivers were running, I decided it wasn't worth going and getting Kyle Allen, spending fab, dropping someone. And as we've gotten closer, looking at the matchup, I go, You thought you would have to spend fab to get Kyle Allen? Yeah, I mean, I he was picked up, so I he I, was. Yeah, I think so. So I probably oh. have to do that. But I, I I look at this matchup, and I just think mm, Kyle Allen's probably gonna have a pretty good game. Last week was a strange one, and so I look at Vegas and I say, well, what does Vegas think about the Atlanta resurgence on defense? And they don't think it's legit. When you have an implied point total twenty seven and a half for Carolina, they're at home, they're favored, the high over under. So, very impressive for Atlanta, doing what they did against New Orleans. Still optimistic for Kyle Allen. Uh, Allen or Matt Ryan? I mean, Matt Ryan on the road here. Traditionally, you know, a 300-plus yard passer every single game. Having lost Sanu, having lost Hooper. I think yeah, but he still has Julio Jones. And he's still Matt He also Ryan. lost Devonta Freeman. I lean the Matt Ryan side. Or gain Brian Hill, depending on your Oof. perspective. You lean the Matt Ryan side. I think he's the safer play for sure. Kyle Allen has a wider range of outcomes. Brian Hill, love it. Yeah. Last week, tons of work in a game where I think Devonta Freeman still had over 30% of the snaps before he got hurt. Christian McCaffrey, let's not. Let's talk about him only to say you're great. You're great, yep. Christian. Keep it up, partner. Go get him. Go get him. DJ Moore, love him this week. We're going to talk about him shortly. He has been just a target monster of late. Yeah, Who? over his last four games, he's got a 16-game pace of 160 targets. I like it. And so that the real equation here for Kyle Allen in this Carolina offense is that Atlanta does enough on the road that you know Matt Ryan can do enough with Russell Gage, Brian Hill, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley's been getting the snaps. He has not been producing for your team. And so are you kind of... Are you trying to find another option this week? Have you just been locking Calvin Ridley in for two weeks? I am not trying to find a different option. I mean, I'd rather play Calvin Ridley over a waiver guy. Like the Demarius Thomas, who's interesting as a desperation play, I would still play Calvin over him. Calvin or Crowder? Crowder. Calvin or Terry? Terry. I guess you were Terry yeah. over Crowder. All right, and then Russell Gage brought him up as an interesting stash. He plays Tampa next week. So if, you know, he's one of those guys that if you put him at the bottom of your bench, even if you don't play him, and he has a big week, he's got a nice matchup coming up. Well, he's got a pretty solid matchup right now. I agree. But if you want to wait and see, Mike, not all of us want to just throw him in. All right. Some of us might have to. <laughs> but, but it won't surprise me if Russell Gage has a better game than Calvin Ridley. Let me put it that way. Sure. I mean, you you don't know where the targets are going to go. Obviously, I don't think that the Carolina Panthers are focusing in on Russell Gage as the guy to stop. Uh, Curtis Samuel this week, also a solid play. Everybody against Atlanta has been, for the most part, outside of last week, although last week you still had nice games for Michael Thomas, Jared Cook. Greg Olson, big game last week, 8 for 98 on 10 targets. He's definitely someone that you can... You know, you should be starting at tight end. Uh, he's almost to the point where you go, okay, he's if he's a must start. I don't think you have to start him. There's other guys that I might pivot to. But when you get 10 targets last week and you start to see him getting more involved with Kyle Allen, it, it gives, you, gives you hope that he can be consistent. Unfortunately, one of the things that happens once you get up there in age, and I think Greg Olson's at the 34, 35 range, is we haven't – we have lost some of that – you know, the guaranteed connection that we had with him. And, uh, you know, he had the nice game this past week, but it had been bad for a, a, a pretty big run. You wonder that what the ceiling is, but you like the 100% of snaps. Yeah. On the other side, do you hold Austin Hooper? If he's out four weeks, we're in week 11. 
11, 12, 13, 14. You're yes. just saying I'm holding him for the championship and the semifinals. Yeah, I hold him. Really? 100%. You hold the number one tight end. You hold him through. And Would you hold Travis Kelsey? Fair. It's That's fair. I mean, yes, yeah, you of would. Of course. And you got to view Hooper in that lens. In the uh, unfortunately, and I'm sorry to tell you this, fantasy owners, your odds are that you're probably playing. I don't know a Noah Fant this week, and then like a Jonu next week, and no, then no, and you're then playing you, Abercrombie next week. Oh, Hollister. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're probably rotating with frustration for four weeks. You will be so happy to have Austin Hooper coming back off of an MCL tweak, and he will be coming back. If he misses four weeks, he will be coming back against San Francisco on the road. Mm. So that's your semifinal, and you probably want to... And then you get Jacksonville in the championship. Wait and see, and then... Oh, man. It would be really hard for me to bench Austin Hooper in week 15 to play Darren Fels. Right. If you're... Yes, you're not going to be able to pivot to Hunter Henry right now. So, yeah, you, you probably are going to play him against San Francisco. It's really just unfortunate. He, he's had a career year, obviously, leading the position in receptions. It's unfortunate he doesn't get to kind of but, finish that stat line out. But I guess that means if you're one of those teams that has a you, – you've got Hunter Henry and someone drops Austin Hooper because – You're not picking him up in that situation, are you? You're that, not competing for him. Right. I probably wouldn't at that point. Hey, guess what? Click that subscribe button and I might send you something in the mail. Maybe. You should do it.